Welcome back to the water cooler, everyone. Without families, America is nothing. The left knows this, which is why for decades they've been on a mission to destroy the nuclear family, starting with fathers. In the 1960s, women began being told by leftists that their wizard-like ability to give birth to human beings and shape the lives of our future generation meant nothing, and that the only way they would be useful to society is if they became men and joined the workforce. Consequently, over time, men were rendered obsolete by not just the fringe left, but by the dominant narrative. After all, why would we need men when we have big government to save the day? It was the beginning of the end for America, and now here we are, in an age when masculinity is toxic and families are an environmental risk. Well, joining me now to unpack all of this is someone who understands this problem better than most, host of the First Class Fatherhood podcast, Alec Lace. Alec, great to have you on the show, sir. David, honored to be here with you. And you said it right. I mean, I, I, in my opinion, the number one social issue we have in this country is the fatherless crisis. It is destroying so many lives and is responsible for so much of the carnage we're seeing in our country. And if we we're trying to solve all these other social issues, David, but if we don't get to the bottom of this and strengthen our nuclear family units, all we're going to do is keep running around in circles. No, absolutely. And, you know, fatherhood and masculinity tie together. So so what this generation seems to fail to understand is that we do need more masculinity, not less. How has this big lie been able to grow so much in popularity throughout the past few decades? I mean, it's clearly not working for society. Uh, well, obviously, it's by design. And we saw throughout the Black Lives Matter movement right right on their mission statement on their website, David, was we seek to disrupt, de destroy the nuclear family unit. And we're seeing that being played out all over the place. But everything that we're seeing going on, it's more about destroying the family unit and disrupting uh, the normal part of society here with raising our children, family values, the whole bit. It's coming under attack. Masculinity, toxic masculinity. Uh, it, it, we were seeing this more and more, and that's why we need more dads that have been successful, found success in other areas of their life and are known for that, but to really speak to what's given them the most fulfillment in their lives. And that's the fact of having kids, being a father and being that male role model. Yeah. Well, let's drill down on the dad's aspect to this, because when it comes to fathers, fatherlessness, as you mentioned here, is particularly a problem, especially in the minority communities. I mean, Democrats have gone after blacks and Hispanics for years simply to get them to remain in like this hamster wheel of destruction so that they're going to keep voting to keep them in power. So when and how did this start exactly? Because if you look at the data, fatherlessness wasn't really a problem in any community until like the 60s and 70s. And that's when it really started getting bad. Yeah, you could point to the 60s, the Monaghan report, the whole bit there. The fact is how it's happened. We're here right now. And I remember speaking uh, to Michael Irvin at the Super Bowl, I covered the last four Super Bowls, asking the players about their, you know, their fatherhood journeys. Michael Irvin spoke to me so passionately, he was practically spitting at me, talking about the problem with this, the epidemic of it in the African-American community. And that he even said, I don't condone divorce, but if you got to get divorced, divorce your wife. Never, ever divorce your kids. These guys got to stay on their post. They got to be involved in their kids' lives. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I can trace it back to the 60s and the war on poverty, right? We started to increase the money and the government got involved, not just with that, with Medicaid, Medicare, the whole thing. And, and here we are basically giving people an incentive uh, to stay at their station in life. And of course, that raises the whole problem as it relates to fathers and mothers and families staying intact. So th this is a two part problem here, uh, Alec, because it's not just about how we raise our sons, but also how we raise our daughters. I mean, we need to raise men to be better leaders, but we also need to raise our daughters to not settle for anything less than a great leader. So how do we do this? I mean, how do we talk to daughters about this? Well, one way is to be involved in their lives. I mean, David, all the statistics point to it. Anywhere you see these statistics, the, the high rate of teenage suicide, teenage drug use, teenage pregnancy, all of it correlates with a high volume of fatherless households. And so the first thing we got to do is get fathers involved in their kids' lives. It's the single most important thing that you could do for a child is have their father be around and be involved in their life. And for me, I think we need to start that. Other dads need to encourage the other young dads. We see so many, uh, so many dads giving that doom and gloom to these other new dads. So I try to encourage dads to be an ambassador for fatherhood. Don't tell them about, oh, just wait till the kid starts crying. Just wait till you, uh, you can't go out with your friends anymore. Just wait till they start teething. No, turn that around and encourage the young dads. Just wait till you get a chance to go out and throw a ball with your son. Just wait till you get a chance to go out and, and have a conversation with your kids and, and talk about the fun things that are coming their way and stop with all the doom and gloom. They don't need to hear it and you're not doing any good. 
Yeah, that's a good point. You know, you interview big names all the time about fatherhood. You've mentioned a couple of them here. Obviously, no one is perfect. But what do you see as like a common denominator among some of these great fathers? I mean, what are some of the keys to successfully raising a family here? What what should people take away and say, look, here are a couple of the not the don'ts, but the do's here? Well, the big takeaway here, David, is that we're all a lot more alike than we are different. I mean, the media tries to pull us apart as if we're we should be at each other's throats. I've interviewed dads from every race, religion, creed, background. And and one thing we all have in common as dads, we want the best for our kids. We want them to succeed. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be in successful relationships. We don't want to see them sad, upset, depressed, all this stuff. So we, we all identify with one another that way. And we're all trying to be better. There is no playbook for this. But listening to other guys' experiences, what they've gone through, can help you get through some of the moments that you're having. And we, we see all these guys, like you said, I mentioned all these famous people because they're known for Super Bowl championships, being a Navy SEAL operator, all this other stuff. But when it comes down to it and you talk to them about what's really given them any fulfillment in life, they all respond the same way. It's all about their, their kids and becoming a father. That's the truth of it. And we need to expose that more with these guys that are well known out there. But here, here's the problem. And I agree with you, by the way. I agree with you. Here's the problem. We have men that are taught to believe that, you know, you got to respect me and, and the career is important and climb the ladder and do the whole thing. And so you do all of that. And in the meantime, something's getting neglected. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, it's hard to do both. Uh, you can do both. I'm not saying you can't, but it's hard. So, so, so that's the problem is that we're telling men on one hand, you know, to knock yourself out, go have a career and be successful, which we want you to do. And women want you to do that as well. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I, I kind of feel like you have to be able to multitask and be able to give 100% in your work and 100% in your family, or it's just not going to work. Yeah, David, I think there's this illusion that the material things in life are going to bring you the true happiness and fulfillment, and that you should spend your time pursuing that at all costs. If you look back in the day uh, in America, people had smaller homes that they lived in and bigger, larger families. Today, people have larger homes and smaller families. When I tell you know young guys that I got four kids, they look at me like I got four heads. Back in the day, they would have been like, what's stopping you? Well, we're, let's get going here. You got to build that family up. So we've skewed our priorities here. We're all chasing that, that big house, that big title and all that stuff. And we think that in the end, that's going to bring us to fulfillment. And guys that have sacrificed, if you talk to people that are over 60 and never had kids, and they talk to you about, you could see the, 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 the desire that they missed out on in life, that they didn't get uh, that, that golden cookie they were promised by getting all these fancy things. We're, we're lying to people. There's an illusion out there that the material is the way to go. And it's not. It's the family is the way to go. Yeah, the regret on the deathbed is not like, man, I wish I had gotten that promotion. I mean, it's just that just not the regret on the deathbed. I don't know one person. Well, I don't know. Maybe. No, never mind. Anyhow, the point is, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Clearly, I haven't. What about faith? I don't know your specific, uh, you know, situation as it relates to faith, but I would think, I would think, I know for a fact, the importance of faith, especially in Jesus Christ and raising a family is vitally important. It's got to be the linchpin in all of it. And it's another part of our society that's fallen apart, David. We've taken God out of so much of our society. I'm a faith-based person. My favorite part of my day is my, my wife and our four kids. We sit down to have dinner every night. We pray together as a family. It's such an important part of our life. We need it in our lives, and it helps bring us together. Uh, it gives us an opportunity, especially around the dinner table with no technology, which has consumed so much of our society today. Uh, we, we've taken God out of it. We've taken the family out of it. What do we expect to see here, David? What do you think are going to be the results when you remove God and you remove the family? You're left with just pure chaos, and that's what we're seeing playing out here across the country. The crime rate alone, you can look at the crime that's been rising all across the country. And whenever you see these, uh, I think it's something like 85% of juveniles that are currently sitting in a detention center or a prison system come from fatherless households. Uh, this isn't some kind of scientific uh, uh, you know, question that we have to try to figure out. It's obvious. We've got to strengthen the nuclear family units in this country yeah. or we're going to be lost. Got to put in the time uh, for sure. Uh, Alec, I appreciate your time. How can people get more information? Where do they need to go to get more information about you? Well, just Google First Class Fatherhood. Go to firstclassfatherhood.com. My new book, First Class Fatherhood, Advice and Wisdom from High Profile Dads, uh, hits the stores April 12th. Uh, it's, it's a collaboration of so much of the great advice and wisdom given out by these high profile dads that I've interviewed on the podcast. So go check right. it out. Alec Lake, uh, Lace, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Great. Insight. Thank you, David. All right. Good stuff.